right there. Oh, yeah! I caught you, son! I caught you, son, because we are live right now! Oh. Gavin, you suck at MC! You never sleep on me, son! Never sleep on me! <laughs> Episode 142, Golden Mike. Oh, he just, he just stuck his palm in my face, son! He just su stuck his palm in my face. The Battle of L.A. ensues. Um, today we're going to be talking about something really cool. There's the status quo, and then there's everything else. The status quo calls us weird. But what about being the best weird you out mm. there? Gavin Masumiya, which means that's a spicy meatball. Gavin Masumiya's with us. <laughs> what? Spicy meatball? I, that's, Is I, with I, us today. <laughs> Um, Let's go. Gavin's, Gavin's got his, his credentials in, in coaching. Not only that, a psychology degree from uh, UC Irvine. Um, and, and really what Gavin does with his coaching is that really to be the best quality you, you got to come with the best quality forms of communication. Gavin, my brother, my brother mm. in avocados, my brother Yay. in LA, I miss you over there. Talk to me, Goose. How are you today, man? Man, dude, I am excited. I want to say this has been a long time coming it's for us. Time coming, like man. the time, like Pacific Standard Time. I thought that's what you meant, Eastern Standard Time. So it's really, it's really beautiful. I want to just represent this that when I first met you at that coaches collective, we went over there, and just like your energy, man, your the energy that you really bring into the world and inside of the conversations really made an impression. Um, and remember how I said, I just I love how. I feel when I'm around you, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I'm, let me, let me, let me actually put this on mute right here because I got the watch party. Uh, but <laughs> watch I think there's, crazy. I think there's, there's a lot to be said about that. When you can love fe the way that you feel around somebody else, I take that as an indicator. Like I want to lean in more, get to know, get to know you more, get to uh, know that human being. Um, and it was, I was so moved by our conversation that we had in such in just that car ride over yeah just we were it was completely disarmed uh we talked about different types of men's work uh and it was like a little mini men's retreat <laughs> it was, it was totally like a mini men's retreat dude um i'm not letting you off the hook though i'm gonna grill your ass this one my that's friend. what i want that's, that's now, but gavin gavin you're on episode 142 do you know why i i've done 142 episodes dude 142 episodes why why is, yeah why continue why keep doing this what was this what was the starting point what motivated you to start in the first place you know i don't know what motivated me to start. oh you know what motivated me to start what motivated me to start was my coach said i think that you'd be good on front of camera in front of the camera and i'm like you're bullshitting me man you're bullshitting me man like all those limiting beliefs right mm -hmm. um but after 142 episodes um the real reason why I've done 142 episodes, 142 is you can't cancel me, son. You can't cancel me. I produce this show. I can't. No one can yeah, take me yeah. off the air. I control this show. My you friend. got the upper hand. OK. <laughs> OK. Now, now, for, now, for those of you, uh, uh, Gavin, and I have this like brotherly love going on. But for those of you who <laughs> haven't met me, uh, my name is Mark Cordon. Founder of the Make Money Coaching Program. Look, if you're looking for PR, you're looking for funnel hacking at its best, mindset shifting, and big time sales, all into a super small package, May 6th. That's when we start Make Money Coaching. I'm also a member of co founder mm. of the Joy Revolution. Gavin knows about the Joy Revolution. Joy Revolution. My right baby. There. Like if you're a, if you're into social justice and a community organizing and you want to do that with some grace, ease, and joy, we're gonna be starting May 26. So the programs are coming around the bay. Hit me up. Let me know. But more important than that, I'm a positive psychology coach, which means this on a regular basis, I get to ask brothers like Gavin. Number one, how happy are you today? And number two, how much are you living? in your full purpose today. So Gavin Masumiya. Mm, beautiful. How happy are you today? Well, happy. I take this as a I, I take this as a scaling question, huh? You, you can you can take it as a <laughs> It seems like all the people that came <laughs> from the same uh, uh, school as I did turned into a scaling question. So, go for yeah. it. Well, you want to know, I want to leave the room. I'm in a really great place. I have a powerful morning ritual. I'm excited to see you, dude. I'm at a 
I, I don't want to say at the way top, I'm at a nine, man. I'm at a solid nine. I'm really excited to, for us to connect, to really share, to be raw, to be open, you know, um, to really live into my self-expression. So that's a nine out of 10. And uh, the next question was, how much of my purpose am I bringing into today? Yeah. I'm going to bring it all into today, man. Woo! Has uh, it always been like that for you? Have you always been living a high happy and a high meaning? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> come on yeah yeah of course man like, hey hey i met, I, hey, I met 142 people some of them say yes some of them are psychopaths no. i want to like i want to say like i'm like i'm so i'm so grateful you know for just being in the family that i do have like uh my road of really what inspired me to to uh become a coach like when I really look back, you know, like connecting the dots backwards, mm -hmm. I'm really proponent on sharing your word, finding your word, especially through the power of voice. Um, I grew up, I was extremely shy. I started a year later. Um, my mom held me back a year later because she's like, oh, immature for, for whatever reasons, you know. So I was always a year older than everybody. That made me even more insecure because every time my birthday rolled around, I was like, it was, I kind of got made fun of. Like, why are you older than everybody? Yeah, uh, they're like, did, they're, it, it, did you flunk? And so I didn't even look forward to my birthdays. It's so it's uh, like fifth grade, and and it's like your forty second birthday, and <laughs> <you're>... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that. It's like that one year difference was there was like a stigma to that even that one year difference. Um, but uh, you know, it was I was like an average student in school. Yeah, I didn't I didn't perform. wasn't an elite performer. My mom, my sister was actually interestingly enough, golden Mike. She was the golden child. Never oh. got less. Older sister, or younger. Yeah, older. She's three years older. Okay. Turning thirty-five, and so I always felt like there was a there was a ruler that was kind of like set, and I just couldn't meet that. Um, and so I was always on that tucked away in that little red carpet square. Um, in school, some teachers would say like, "Why, why, or do you have something to say, Gavin? Why don't you say anything?" Uh, and it, that would just make me curl back because default is for me to get quiet and withdrawn. And I still notice that now, and I've, it takes a push. Yeah. For me to be into things that that scare me, but my um, I was the shyest kid, you know, in class growing up. So, believe it or not, I was by far the shyest kid. Like I was, <laughs> like no one even knows the sound of my voice. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, that's the thing, y'all. Is everyone thinks that this whole idea of being happy today and and living in meaning and purpose today um, has to do with like you being there for a very long period of time? Oftentimes, um you know, we have these ups and we have these downs and we have these all arounds. And that's what positive psychology is about. It's not about being happy, living in meaning 24 seven. So if you're watching right now and you're like, dude, mm -hmm. like I was a 10 last week in, in terms of happy and I ate some bad shellfish, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not feeling too hot today. Yeah, that's cool. Watch the show. It, also at the same time, like you might be saying to yourself, Gavin, like I've been working in corporate for 20 straight years. I thought that was going to make me happy. And something's off, man. Something's off when it comes to my meaning and my purpose. Mm. Um, I feel like a weirdo to go and tell people that something's off too, you know? So like um, uh, Tal Ben-Shahar says it the best. Like if you're feeling, um, if you're feeling happy 24 seven, then number one, you're dead or number two, you're a psychopath <laughs> mm. because we were meant to feel all of those things. So if you're feeling happy, like Gavin is right now, Gavin, show me some LA hearts right there. Show me some LA hearts. Hit that hey. heart hey. button. Hit that heart button. Let hit. us know. And I want to, I'm going I'm to hit a heart right here. Heart, heart, boom, heart. Boom, there you go. boom. He's hitting the heart. He's, he's hitting his own heart right now, baby. <laughs> Um, or if, if you're like, you know what, I'm not totally there yet, I'm just feeling it, let Gavin and I entertain you, let some of the concepts wash over you, you never know what will turn it around for you, alright? Here's the last one, man, here's the last one, this is the one, this is the big one in positive psychology, it's called hope, and it's not about wishing hope, you remember we talked about that, yes, like, hope Absolutely. from the standpoint of wishing, it ain't that hope, it's hope yeah. That that um, that's practical and that you can use, but it starts out with you knowing that today is going to be the best day of your life, whether mm. you're one or you're uh. a ten. It starts out with that, mm. and if you're that, you're optimistic.
And if you're optimistic, there's another button down there, people. That button, that button's called the wow face. And Gavin and I are about to show you what that wow face looks like. Asian style. Wow. You ready? You ready? Okay. Okay, ready? I'm ready. You ready for the wow face? I I'm ready for the wow okay, face. Okay, here we go. I've been ready for the wow face. Three, yeah. two, one. Ah! Mr. Jones! <laughs> Let's go! Okay, so with that said, son, with that said, Gavin, what's your story, man? So the the beginnings, you know, as you can see from my face, I'm Japanese American, right? Fourth generation, so deeply enmeshed in American culture. Uh, two amazing parents. My mom was a teacher, my dad's tired social worker. Like amazing, just you know, kind of what you would say as the perfect like middle class family and they were as a social worker and teacher they really um were about giving really giving because those jobs is not like the biggest you're not there you're not there to make make go there for the money yeah doing there to serve the kids and almost a kindergarten teacher you know my dad was helping to get funding for for the underserved that had uh different types of uh, sp special needs um, and I didn't know how that really impacted me to see that, you know, but they really were about community service and me being part of a Japanese American community growing up. I played basketball. I was in Boy Scouts, too. Um, there was always things that we had to do together, like wake up in the morning to prepare for these festivals. And we had to, like, wake up super early on Sunday to do. And it's like, I want to sleep in. <laughs> but, um, no, and it's those things that you don't realize, like looking until you look back and you're like, oh, man. I've, I was, my parents conditioned me to, to, to serve, you know, to, and, uh, wow. Like, that's just not a lesson that you'll get, that you'll see as a kid. Yeah. You know, so if anybody that is watching this is like young and is a teenager and, you know, parents might tell you to do certain things or this, that, and the third, like, you're not really going to know your, our brains, you know, like our brains not even fully developed until what, around like 25. Mm-hmm. For a lot of it, even for me, the certain things I'm doing now, I'm not even going to know until I look back on how it's all connecting. Right. But um, I wanted to be a psychologist, like, and I thank myself for being shy because it was for, through being shy growing up and not being the popular kid growing up that I wondered, like, geez, why, why is Sean Henderson like so popular? Why are these chicks always on him? You know, look at Peter Evenson, like, why, why not me with my blue brace? <laughs> That's sexy, like my parted down hair in the middle, like that's not sexy, <laughs> you know. And uh, <laughs> so, but it started making me thinking by asking these questions, right? Kind of like how coaches do, it. like questions, yeah. like what makes it so popular? It's that, and uh, it was, um, and it would it somehow in high school. I never even took psychology, but uh, this was actually a really big thing. I don't share this too much, but um, in ninth grade, I was in art class. Her name was Miss Carabio. She was the teacher. It was fifth period. And then I sat next to this girl named Ariana. She was on the soccer team. Now, we didn't have any type of romantic thing. But she just started, like, I was I was still very shy back then. And she just started talking to me, like, hey, so uh, what do you do? What is it like to be in a Japanese household? And all these different <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. I was like a, an enigma to her, like mystery enigma. And so she just started open. And I just started sharing more. You know what's funny about this is that, like, I so don't see this conversation happening in LA. I see like Japanese people running deep over there. <laughs> you know? it's so, it's a, yeah, it's, this is that Venice High School. I mean, it was back then, it was more predominantly like Hispanic there. Yeah. But she, um, I remember one time she asked me, like, she was going through some hard times uh, with at home in the household. Yeah. And she just said, like, she asked for my advice. It was like around her father. And Mark, I don't know what the heck I said. You know, like I might have said some generic things, like, won't you just tell me you love him or something like that? Yeah. Uh, and then, anyways, like the the next day, I'm walking to fifth period because it's after lunch. You walk to fifth period, and she like she just runs to me with a big smile on her face. She had a she has a smile that you can see both side up and down teeth both time. You know, <laughs> you can walk him up like that's that's special though. That's very genetically that's special. A, like, that's a big, that's a big yeah. smile, bro. <laughs> and she just did it, and she came up and she hugged me, and she said, "Gavin, so I, I uh, listened to what you said, and it, um, and she just said, and it, it, it helped." 
And, um, you know, there's probably other times in the past, but I just can't recall. It wasn't significant. But to me, that that resembled one of the first times that somebody made me feel like my words actually meant something. Mm. Mm. You know, and uh, I reached out to her like even two years ago and I just let her know, like, I didn't get a message back. But I don't know if you remember this time, but I really appreciate you getting me out of my shell. And uh, that's a big part of of my mission in the world. I want people to know that when they're coming from their authentic place and you share your weird, like you're going to have people that are not going to like it. Right. Like Ty Lopez says, well, there's always going to be three categories of people, especially the more that you put yourself out there. One bucket is that there's just the indifference. They don't care. Yeah. They don't care about their life. They don't give a shit. They're not going to hit on you. They just don't care. Yeah. And you have one. There's just like, they actually don't like it. They might start to give comments or they'll just say, like, you're weird with your red hair, with your big ears. Like, what do you like, – you're too, bo- too boisterous. You're boisterous, right? You need to – you're too extra. You're too much. I'm too extra. Oh, <laughs> boy. Yeah, you've been around me too long. <laughs> and then, you know, that third bucket is they may not even go up to you or they may be – they will reach out to you. But they're like, I like that. I see a piece of me in you. Or I'd like to have more of that in me. And those three buckets, it's just like you, you could wait. You could wait to, to, to wait for somebody else to share their weird and connect with them and mm-hmm. be like that kind of creator, which is still great. Like, oh, man, like Mark, he's cool. He's yeah, out yeah. there. He, I'm going to reach out. And you can also be the source of that. And I, I think they're all three of those are really valuable. As sensitive as I am, because I was a very sensitive kid growing up, and I still am sensitive. Yeah. No, when people disagree with me, instinctually what I want to do is I want to run away. I want really? to defend myself. Run away. Yeah, like, you know, and um, it takes something for me to step in and be like, what do you mean? You know, yeah. I want to understand you more because otherwise I just want to run away. So um, it threw it. I knew in high school that I wanted to study psychology. I don't know why. I never took it. But <laughs> And for this story, like, I don't know why, like, that's the interesting thing. But I said, I knew going to whatever university I was going to get into, you know, that I'm going to study psychology. I don't fucking, that's so weird. I never read a psychology book either. But uh, anyways, I studied psychology over there. I loved it. Um, I oh, I loved it. I crammed a whole bunch of shit, but I actually, I loved it. And I said, okay, I'm going to probably be a psychotherapist. And I was blessed, man, just through deaths in the family. And this is kind of a double edged, but. Uh, we, my parents helped to fund my college education mm-hmm. through, through, you know, my auntie died, God bless her heart. My grandma died pancreatic cancer. Um, we inherited some of the money and I got to have a ride, you know, some, dude, everybody I know has had debt. Yeah. And, uh, and when I got out, I was like, okay, in order to get a side D, I had to take a loan. Let me think about this for a second, you know? <laughs> and so the easy thing to do is I just took my dad's route. My dad was in social services. It was related, pertinent to psychology. And low-ass paying job, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I got to tell you, man, I was working with these kids across autism spectrum disorder in their families, within their family dynamics. I worked with so many different kinds of kids, foster home kids, Uh uh, p- p- families that came from Serbia, they couldn't even speak that much English, you know, nonverbal kids that can't speak anything, that couldn't s- say anything. So all of my teachings were, was I had to learn like, uh, how, like different gestures that they use, like, and what I loved about that is I got to really s- appreciate so many different things around the importance of, of compassion. It really primed my, my, me to be compassionate. Because they homes were broken up uh, yeah. because of the difficulties of the you know through the child's difficulties or his abilities, it, it caused a lot of stress in the household that some some a parents divorced and whatnot. So yeah. I I knew that there was something around me wanting to. I loved actually having conversations with people throughout, and I'll talk to the families. Yeah, something coming up for you? Yeah, well, actually, like. Like your your up your upbringing being one of, you know, here I am this kind of shy person, introverted person. Um, default is to um, 
not want to get into uh you know a skirmish with anybody right i just want to even hide at some points the job that you were doing requires you not to hide <laughs> right was was this a difficult thing for you like to go from you know go from gavin all those years to then gavin that's pretty much in the fire with 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 uh what's going on with families and 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 having to address certain things or or was it a natural extension it was you know bad time like you know i went to college like i really got out of my shell in college i was just uh in so many different ways i i was you know in drugs so, like i just mm -hmm. did so many different ugh, things that i'm actually really grateful for now i maybe in certain cases i shouldn't be here mm-hmm um, <clears throat> but I, uh, it was when I well, cooked, ended up taking that job and started working with the kids, I, I realized how important, man, <laughs> kids are amazing. Dude. They're like the, you know how one of the principles in IPIC is that everybody's both a student and teacher. Mm -hmm. Dude, those kids are the greatest teachers, man. Like, fuck. They, uh, they're so curious. Even when they, some of them couldn't talk, they didn't have the mental capacity to talk yet. You know, like they're, you know, th you take something and they're like, <laughs> I'm serious. Like it, they'll, they'll lick it. Like, oh man, I got dust in my mouth right now. But you know, you know, yeah, you gotta dust that shit, son. You, <laughs> you put those props in your mouth, son. <laughs> they, 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 you know, <laughs> they're good. Skadoosh. Skadoosh. The playfulness, man. Yeah. Playfulness is so important. Like, uh, I even, um, I'm, I'm a big proponent of also like, uh, psychedelics. I haven't done it in like 10 years and I did it for the first time really recently. And it, the whole theme that kept coming up is play, mm -hmm. wonder, play. Like what, what is like even coaching for me, it, it, it like for, to work with people, I, I can't make a difference in anybody if no, if, if they, if they're not willing to play, if they're not willing to wonder. Yeah. And kids do that so well. They're yeah. the best at first. They didn't need the 10,000 hours to do it. Yeah, okay, go so, ahead. So uh, other than uh, other than play, in addition to play. Yeah. What did those kids teach you? They taught me <clears throat> that small victories matter. And with so with that line of work, right? There's a lot of repetition. So they say repetition is the father of learning. Repetition is the mother of skill. Um, that's how we, we learn growing up, right? Rote memorization, remembering our ABCs. Uh, anyways, um, I had to repeat a lot of different things. And sometimes I get discouraged, like, am I really making a difference? And my mom actually is great. She was very sage. And, she, you know, she, as a teacher, she just said, I love, actually, I love what I do. I love teaching and working with the kids. And, um uh, I wish I saw her teach, man. I know I was never able to her, uh, but uh, she, she said she would say to me like, "The pay is not great. The LEUSD is it's not it's shit." <laughs> you know, a lot of teachers complain. So yeah. uh, during lunch break, she just she would stay to herself inside of her inside of her classroom while and just eat her on her own to get her break. Because if she goes into the lounge. They're just, everyone's complaining. It's chaos, yeah. She's like, you know, the beautiful thing about working with the kids is that no matter what happens, there's always a story that you can take home with you, you know? There's always a kid in the class that says the darndest thing, or they <laughs> somebody, or, or there's like a little Lily, little Lily, like, notices little Johnny crying, and he just goes up to her, him and kind of hugs him. He's like, it's okay, Johnny. You know, like a five-year-old is that be the cutest shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that. What a <laughs> what a lesson, man. That just makes my heart melt to to you know to, uh, to do that. So it was there was always moments like that. That it's easy to be like, oh, um, uh, this isn't working, or damn, the pace, or this and that. So, but during the time that I was there, it was like those small things matter, and in fact, those small things build up to help make those big things possible. That's amazing, Gavin. Um, I want to get to the topic today. Um, it's it's one of the most interesting topics because uh, we had to reset twice around <laughs> this motherfucking <laughs> episode one forty two. But like the 
the the episode um, theme is about weirdness. Mm. You're weird. Um, mm. Like what? What do you mean by that? Like when you when you when you talk about sort of owning your weird, like and being the best weird that you can. What what does that mean, dude? I would I would say like weird, like really weird. I don't even have a clear cut definition. The way <laughs> this that, is the way awesome. That, we get to cool because we get to work on it together. Let's really yeah. get on with this because uh, so basically how I open it up is you know when I talk to people I'll ask them like um, you know how many of you like when you're kind of by yourself in those quiet moments at home you you some you have a thought sometimes this is like damn I'm kind of fucking weird. <laughs> 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 yeah. You see, this is usually the reaction. People laugh or they, everyone raise, everybody raised their hands. It's unanimous. And so I'm like, I don't even have to define it, you know, um, for one. And then it's like that was a really telling thing. I mean, I, maybe I've done it for around like maybe 100 people so far. 100%, dude. 100% so far. I'm waiting to find someone that's like, I'm not fucking weird. I'm not weird. But that uh, in uh, and uh. of itself makes the person weird <laughs> by not it saying is? that they're not weird. Oh, <laughs> because, oh yeah, look at you. Okay, Mr. Minority Normal here. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Minority Normal is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, so like, you know, my, my tagline when I say uh, share your weird, find your weird, it was like, dude, we're not going to, we we all have different flavors of weird. And so like for me, I I like I have this bigger energy enthusiastic where I will get certain things like especially when I was in Japan and I lived there for two years and this is where my coaching career really uh, started when I was pro bono coaching people from the US Navy people from back home um, and Japan's country like there is one of my friends told me like hey when you uh you have such a big energy field Gavin that Japan isn't really it's a different kind of society it's more collectivistic it's yeah. more about an appearance to harmonize with everybody. Yeah. Respect is really there. They have a saying that the nail that stands out gets hammered Hammer back down. in. Yeah. And in America, it's different. It's individualistic, right? Even like the notion of the American dream. It's like you could do it. It's a DIY. You can do it on your own and make this happen. So it's a completely different paradigm from which their people are looking at the world. And so I'm telling you, don't don't let uh, don't let japan they say you know like don't let them beat out that spirit in you mm. i really to heart um and so there's even when i'm over here some people let's just say you're, you're you're so much you know um and i'm for me my weirdness is in i'm a ble- i'm obsessive compulsive okay i'm obsessive compulsive i need to know where everything is so I, if i showed you my place you'd be like you sterile motherfucker. <laughs> I, just find up. I know where everything is in my place and I get really mad. Like, and that's something Except I Except for hate. that prop you just licked that was all <laughs> dusty, you nasty ass. I'm a, I'm a paradox, man, yeah. But like, I'll, you, you'll find me like start lining things up like subconsciously and people say, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I guess I was, that kind of annoyed me. So I wanted to line up these cups. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I mean, that's a part of my root. I embrace it, you know, yeah. like, uh, I um I like I love power posing, man. That's my thing. I, I'm, I power pose in public, you know. Like at, during my breaks in the gym, I'll just power pose like this. I just want to make sure, like, that I'm not in the way of anybody that's moving weights. But I just go do that. And um, do people think I'm weird? Maybe. You've never had anyone roid raging attack you because you're <laughs> in a yet, power pose yet. in the middle of a gym. <laughs> I, that that they might come though, but I'm thinking that before then. Because I've started doing it in cafes too. Like, you know, I'll take a break at my coffee connection and I'll stand up and I'll just be like, ah. Oh. Just in the middle. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, it's just like that's, that's a part of my weird, man. I love you this know? guy. Like yeah. in the car, like part of what makes me weird is that when I'm in the car, I contrive tantrums. I just, you know, when we did wow, like, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's that's me, man. That's like me in the car ride to let to let the stress get out of my body yeah. instead of always using meditation to chill and get it. And it's just like I want to just get it out. I want to get yeah. my primitive. And yeah. so when I'm on the freeway, sometimes people are looking. What are they doing? I stay away from this guy. Um, so uh, <laughs> generations of collectivist, harmonious. Um, values being passed on to you and 
you know, power, power posing in the middle of the gym is not a collectivist thing <laughs> to do, man. Yeah. It's it's a it's a rec- it's it's like a um it's a a, a a claiming and ownership of of your power, right? That's that's very non collectivist. Yeah, what, right. Um. So, to your family, are you weird? Um. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll tell I'll tell you what happened. It was a beautiful thing. Um, I've been getting very um, I've been doing a lot of mirror work, you know, like Louise Hay, uh, and I I do it every morning, um, in addition to a ten minute meditation. And so I've been um, sharing it with my family more, and I have like my own way of going about it. When I did it with my mom, uh, recently a couple of days ago, um. And I just shared her. This is going to be a new part of my uh, that I'm going to bring into my coaching for my in-person coaching. Yeah. Is going doing I call it miracle work. And so, get, Ma, I just want to let you know first, I acknowledge you for everything uh, that for you being open to this, even though you don't really know what this is about. And so through this, Mark, um, I got to just share through sharing my weird. Like, hey, you want to do this? You know, let me. Do, uh, my mom got to experience meditating for the first time in her life. She's almost seventy. Yeah. I guided her in centering. I do it with all my clients, right? I do a three-minute centering exercise. We breathe together where we really synchronize. And then um, we set we set an intention. Um, and she's she's a really just a jibber-jabber. Jibber-jabber like me. Her mind just goes everywhere. She can't stay still. And so she, it was really cool to share that, that piece with her um, meditative piece because she's like, I don't give myself a lot of that, that space a lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, doing just the, the mirror work, a miracle work with my mom was beautiful. Um, I ended up doing it with her where we just took turns. Mm-hmm. And um, it opened up another realm of our connection, you know? Like, I could, I've been holding back, you know? Holding back with my coaching. Like, I'm not going to share with them. They're not going to, they don't know, like, what, is, what it's like, you know, to, to really start this up and the challenges of it all. And um, I gave that up, or I gave that up that day, and I just said, I want my parent family to know what I'm up to, mm-hmm. and um, and to really share it with them. Because underneath it, what I loved about the coaching when I was in Japan coaching people is I loved helping people to wonder and create. Yeah. And um, a big theme that day was around forgiveness. It, it organically just unfolded into forgiveness, man. And um, sometimes I don't, you know, I don't know if sometimes the, the struggles or the challenges of the people that are even closest to me. And it wasn't just forgiveness, Mark. It was self-forgiveness. Like, how how many times do, like, whoever's listening, like, do we, do you hold yourself back uh, or you make yourself wrong for something and it, like, it lives and it stays there? Because it it's not confronted or it's not it's not there's not a re- resolution to it. It's just just throw it underneath the the, the blanket. Yeah, it was cool. It. Gavin, yeah. what were you what were you um, practicing self forgiveness for in particular? Well, that it it didn't start off with self forgiveness. Yeah. It was actually, it was based on I wanted to keep it light, so it's around. It came across. There's four parts, okay, to my miracle work that I have so far. One is intention. So I let her know, like, this is my, so the intention of it, I'll let you know, I use, I've used mirror work for forgiveness. I've used it to, to reinforce self-love, to, to be honest with myself, um, to, to embrace my physicality, right? Because if you stand in front, naked in front of the mirror, you know, just to like be with it and, and to imagine thoughts. You stand are... butt ass naked in front of a mirror. <laughs> are you power posing? <laughs> I, 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 I power post in front of I, – I do, I do. Uh, now we're going to de- detract, but uh, uh, I have this this mantra that I go, thank you, body. And so I, I pair it with, with my – I'll do it. Show. I pair it with uh, my – with actual – I'm very kinesthetic. So thank you, body. Thank you, mind. Thank you, heart. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, life. And I'll do that sometimes when I'm naked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take off your clothes. Let's see how it looks. 
<laughs> let's, uh, let's let's get some of the likes up here in here. <laughs> but you know that that, that is the crazy thing because it, it was around love and gratitude. So the intention is number one. The number two is centering. Then we center ourselves, and after I hear their intention, I I kind of uh, we have we close we close our eyes, we do a meditation together, and then I I get them present to the intention that they said. And then number three, that's the miracle work. That's where they're literally in front of the mirror. I'm right next to them. So in that instance, I was right next to my mom and uh, got her just connected to just look at yourself. You know, just look at yourself in the mirror. And just know that you might have considerations that come up. Like, why do I have bags underneath my eyes? I got wrinkles on my forehead. I look older than I thought, you know. And then you might notice other thoughts like, oh, God, if only you did this yesterday and, you know, all these other things happen. And just imagine that each thought, you know, we have some neuroscientists say we have between 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. It's a lot of thoughts. I mean, we're human. Like, we're thinking creatures. Mm -hmm. So it's completely normal. And just imagine as that thought comes in, like, oh, I, why, why are these bags in my eyes? Imagine just in a, in a little uh, transparent balloon and you have a needle just let it pop and the more that pops good let it pop and we then just do that for a couple minutes and then um we go i go into gratitude and so as she's looking in the mirror she's oh it's like and you might have right and really to really to to uh, assess like considerations in people is, is important it's just like yeah and uh you might you might want to look away but i invite you just to stay with it stay with that person in the mirror and I, I'm very third person with it. Like, stay with that person in the mirror. Don't stay with you. Stay with that person. I think there's a power in disassociating a little bit. And then it's then we go into gratitude. Like, now I want you to think of the word gratitude. Just be with that person and think of the word gratitude. And then I move into, you know, I want you to express gratitude for that to that person in the mirror, to that woman, that wise woman there without saying a single word, just through the power of your eyes. That person has been with you your entire life. It's, she never for one second left you. Just most of the time you don't see it. And then it's just getting really present and you know, and now you had now this is a moment where you really get to be with that person and send more gratitude than you ever have in your entire life without uttering a single word to that person until they get it. Um, usually tears are shed in the process, right? Um, and then I vocalizing, right? Then it's like, I'm grateful for you for and only speak when something comes up. And then in between before some, you say something else, let it breathe. Let that person get it. All right? And then we went into love. Sending the love unspoken. I love you for, with the voice, spoken. And then, I love you. Remove the for. Why do you need to have a reason for, to love yourself? <clears throat> and, you know, that might be hard to just say I love you to really get it. So you can modify it like, I want to learn to love you, you know, um, I'm learning to love you a little bit more. Uh, and so just through that whole process, yeah, forgiveness was a big piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, huge. um, it was, it's beautiful, you know, and I have to say in, in a selfish way, Mark too, I love the experience of myself when I, when I do my miracle work. <laughs> it's, well, it sounds like it, man. You have to love what you do. And by the way, for those of you tuning in right now, this is not a gay Asian drama where we're talking about loving each other. This is something different. This is something different. Nothing, nothing like, nothing like there's nothing wrong with gay Asian dramas. It's just not one that you're watching right now. We're watch. we're talking about owning your weird, um, and the sort of miracle work, um, the intention, the centering, uh, the, the mirror work, the miracle work, uh, gratitude and love, really breaking down some um, some hardcore things. The power of just the stare alone. I'm just going into positive psychology right now. Go ahead. The power of the stare alone, just to look in the mirror 
and to uh just stare just look and like your face like changes when you look in the mirror right have you done have you done this or if you do it with another person same thing too like yeah. you look at the other person the face their face changes it it uh, uh little micro expressions of emotion come out um you see you, you see like cycling of sadness and uh like j jubilation you mm. know like happiness and um uh you know it, it releases this it, it releases this rush of neurochemicals that both make you feel like you're on cloud nine but also that if you're with another person like you feel very attached to it to them you know um there's and with all the with all the stuff that we've got going on here right like uh phones and uh broke it <laughs> uh, phones and stuff we don't really look each other in the eye anymore you know what i mean um and so i think that that's really i think that that's that's really 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 cool i i think for those of you who are tuning in a little bit late watch this again and and yeah. and um cuz gavin just gave us a a really nice rubric to follow one day when we're just by ourselves hit play and look in the mirror it's pretty cool it's very cool. and and mark the cool the beautiful thing about it too is that we all have mirrors you know like i mean i have a mirror here when i took a shit this morning i wash my hands i wash my hands right and i'm washing my hands i don't believe hands. you i don't believe you <laughs> <laughs> you know i like i like the match and and i put it in the toilet you know because you you don't want to get i don't have to <laughs> you're this so one. weird but true <laughs> <laughs> and then you you know you wash your hands and then sometimes the shit gets underneath the nails if it's too grown you gotta like it out. <laughs> oh my god where but has this anyways gone? like yeah <laughs> no but uh, what I, is you know we have these moments that are otherwise forgotten in the mirror whether we're doing our hair you yep. do your hair every morning i see you slick back like me yeah. uh over in public restroom or we have the mirror uh, and we kind of like arrange it like this if like the sun visor and the car kind of like distorts oh, it yeah, you know yeah. and then we have those moments we have these moments of like sometimes it's just five or ten seconds but those five to ten seconds like uh has been really been grounding for me like before i'll go up and talk or before i have like a, a coaching session it's just that i spend those seconds as i'm washing my hands after i take a piss and it's just like <laughs> Dude, I'm being serious right here, I man. Know you are. Fucking this up, dude. You're you you're can't messing get up the box. More real than this, man. <laughs> but then I stop, right? And then it's just you. It's really seriously five seconds, and it's just. I love you, man. And you go about your day. You know, there's five seconds, and you know, like even the centering exercise. No matter who uh, has a spiritual practice or not, that whether prospects picks what they have, a clients. I always do it and it's only three minutes, man. And almost without fail after the three minutes of doing a centering exercise. The mere five seconds, man. Ten seconds. <laughs> centering exercise. It's just the three minutes. Like afterwards, seriously, like I've had I've had uh clients and prospects cry afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that was not the intention. Mm -hmm. It's just quieting down the mind with the breath, mm -hmm. with the soothing voice that's kind of guiding it with paying attention to a heartbeat and giving it a gentle massage because it doesn't have to, it, it beats a hundred thousand times a day and it's without our awareness. Like you could go out a whole day without even paying attention to your heartbeat. Like, but it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't take a fucking break. Nope. It doesn't take a damn break. And so, um, getting grounded to the very simplest of gratitudes, which Tony Robbins has really primed in me, you know, he's a big reason of, of my path too. Because his personal power two is what got me to Japan. I said to go inside personal power two, and emotion is created by motion. You know, yep. um, that's why like I do these body physiological things too. It actually impacts me. It impacts my day. Even if certain people are going to call me weird, I'll take that. Okay, I'll let's, take that. Yeah. Let's turn the weird up. <laughs> and weird it makes up. me. It makes me more beyond resilient. Let, like, for let, you. Let's turn the weird up. I, How do you turn it? How do you turn I, it up? I, I want a rap battle here. I, I want oh, a, I want a rap battle. I want a rap <laughs> battle. You start. You start. Okay. All right. 
put me in a put me in a rap battle with Mr. Mark Cordon. Oh, I'm fucked. I'm gonna tell you if you're ready to freestyle against me, you're gone. So long. But I'm not here to break you down in a song. I'm really here to discuss and touch and move through the power of love. Through the power of what we really get to serve. It's that food. It's that powerful miracle work. Every time that you look in the mirror, you can take those five to ten seconds to reckon, to realize that your whole life has been a blessing. So for anybody that's looking or hearing on this golden mic, you have a golden voice that's worthy of being acknowledged because that's the soul's calling that wants to come out of you. Even though sometimes it's like that doubt wants to come out of you, but it's like, that's that fool right there. They just want to keep you safe. It's not very familiar with play. You got to embrace both sides like the yin and yang. It's not just about honoring your happiness. It's also honoring your sadness. Sometimes honoring that sense of madness with our crazy antics. Because you're bad as fuck. And sometimes it takes you to look in the mirror to realize how dope you are. And that's what's up. Hanging out with my boy Gavin. And you know what? <laughs> His name is Gavin. Go hey. down the road with my boy named Gavin. Stopping at a 7-Eleven. Yeah, that's right. Me and Gavin get some Slurpees. You know what? And we try to do some burpees in our yeah. power stance. All naked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, bro. Oh, have you ever have you ever woke up in the morning to take a cold shower, bro? And then you recognize the sensations, but then you cool it down with the power pose? No, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do it inside of a freestyle. Okay. But um uh, <laughs> So I, I do that I do it in the morning too. That's another part of my weird is uh I, I go and I take cold showers every morning. It's just the, it's about one minute now and I have it on the side because my nozzle can change right here. Yeah. And so butt naked right there. It's just like this. And then I count down from 10. It's almost like Mel Robbins' five-second rule. Five have you read that book? rule, yeah. Amazing. And so, uh, but I count down to 10. gives me a little more time to psychologically prepare. I'm like 10, 9, 8, 7, <laughs> 5. I'm not playing 4. It's not funny. 3, 2, <laughs> one. And then look, the minute, the minute it goes right here, right here. It's about surrender, right? It's about surrender is a big has been a big theme for me. It's about breathing into it. <laughs> I hit my chest right here, man, and like, and I breathe for like five times. I don't count no more. I'm just, but I'm gonna take like four solid badass motherfucking breaths, and I, I'm in control, man. I'm in control of this coldness. Or whatever the sensation is, and then I turn around, right? I turn around and then I rock back and forth because the shoulders are very sensitive. Yeah. But I do that for a little bit. I'm like, and then I get to the back of the head right here, and then after I get to the neck, so it goes down like a waterfall down my back. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it tingles. About, yeah, it, it tingles afterwards, and you know, it's like. The, uh, I've I've been doing it for like every day for about like six months, but I've only recently started incorporating the the power pose, and that's been transformational for me because up up until these six months, just say I've been doing it for the past month with the power pose, but for the past five months, I never look forward to the cold showers, even though that's been a it's a habit. Like every day for five months, yeah. I mean, it's, it's automatic now, but still that thought's still automatic. Oh, this I don't like this. I don't like. <laughs> Right. But that's that was the point of me doing it. It was like priming myself for discomfort, which is like same with the muscle, you know, yep. you tear the shoe so that you can grow. Like there's a sense of discomfort that probably the biggest moments in your life where you really felt you were growing, you're probably uncomfortable. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. um, love it, man. Guess what, bro? Yeah. Fit one minute till the hour. That's called flow, son. Oh, that's, called flow, that son. Is, oh, dude. that's called Thank flow, son. That's called flow, son. That's Dude. called flow. Um, here's the dealio. Um, if y'all have not heard of the Energy Leadership Index Assessment, it is ranked in Forbes as one of the top, um, not only strengths-based, but one of the top assessments 
that talk about how you show up in the world, right? Um, and I can't think of a better person to be doing this. This baby is a couple hundred bucks. Look it up on Forbes. It's a couple mm -hmm. hundred bucks. And so to have Gavin doing it at $99 yeah. is a steal right now. www.gavinmasumiya.com. That means yes. that's a spicy meatball. And 30-minute <laughs> consultation. Man, I miss this dude badly. I hope that you're holding it down at the gym. Hope you're holding it down at the gym over there, man. Um, that Santa Monica gym that, that we both go to. Um, so go over to his website. Here is why it's called the golden mic. But before we go there, um, it looks like everybody was in the watch party today and nobody was in the actual thing. So we had more people in the watch party. Oh, so is if that you right? Come, yeah. So if you come back around, if you come back around and watch this again, share it out, share it out. Cause he gave yes. straight up tools like straight up value. I didn't expect him to do this. It was awesome. Um, Gavin. Yes. We're going to have you Mike back. Coming. You've said enough. Almost. Because right now, stand in that power pose, son. Because a yeah. golden mic, a golden mic is coming down from your California home. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. Give it to me. Don't, don't break the flow. <laughs> okay, it's coming down in this in your in 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 your home. This golden mic translates into every language all across the world. The world is picking up what you're about to throw down. Gavin Masumiya, whether you want to talk, whether you want to spit, your golden mic is live now. Gavin, I just want you to know that no matter what you've done and no matter what it is you're going to do in life, I unconditionally and unapologetically love you. You're a powerful motherfucking warrior, even when sometimes the other voice inside of you might tell you otherwise. So this man is standing right in front of you in that mirror as a reflection of who you are and who you really know yourself to be underneath it all, is that you don't need to prove anything to me to get my love. Because I always got your back. I'm always going to be the one rooting for you to be keep going for what you want. Keep coaching, keep speaking, keep doing what you love, even if other people might not agree with it. Because you know why? Your dreams are not theirs. So just remember that I always love you. And I always got you. Never forget that. Boom. Gavin, That's what I'll... I want you to hold that that golden mic. And do you feel the weight of that? Do you feel mm. the weight of that? You're about to pass that to somebody tomorrow who's going to speak the truth tomorrow. But right now, it's your time to hold that mic. But you just you just dropped it, which means throw that mic down, son. Yeah! Smash it, double donkey kick it, step on it, man, step on it. <laughs> That was absolutely amazing, man. Uh, it makes me miss you more and more each day. Um, I got, I got to see you that soon. Move, that movie, man, I was getting boogers all over the place, bro. Yeah, you got some boogers, bro. <laughs> it's get, okay. Wipe, wipe it on your white shirt and you know, I'm put, no, I'm good. Yeah. poop under your fingernails. All that stuff going on, man. Um, Gavin, we're gonna have you back. Yeah. We're gonna have you back for sure, man. Um, now this is the deal, y'all. Uh, again, one last ch chance. Share this out, social yes. media for social good. Um, share your weird, find your weird. So if this really connects with you, come and share this. Uh, really share it to connect. And um, I'm all about deep connection. So Golden Mike, thank you so much for allowing me to, to express my golden voice. At, and I really want people in the world to know that you have it too. Uh, you're welcome, brother. So uh, now that the Golden Mike is smashed, we got 24 hours to put another one together. And Gavin and I have one final question for you, and it's this. 
If you're feeling happy and you're living life to fullest purpose right now, what is your responsibility to change history for the better? Gavin, Mark, 142, we are out. <sighs> Yo, that was that was that was so organic, man. I love your energy, dude. You just bring